Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Adoption Squad. We are your hosts. I am Mary. I'm Annie. And together, are we going to do this? Sure. Okay. We are are the the Adoption adoption Squad. squad. Oh, that was kind of precious. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good times. Um, so I need to um, give a huge shout out to all of our new followers, people who are retweeting, um, liking and subscribing on our YouTube channel. I mean, this week has shown us some tremendous growth and we're definitely very grateful. We are anonymous to our family and friends, so we don't have that little fan base to grow from. So it's really just coming from the atmosphere, the social media world. And um, we just want to say thank you for tuning in and giving us a shot here. Um, Anything you want to add to that? Annie. Oh, sure. I think that it's uh, the Adoption Squad. We named it that so that we, we we would have each other to share stories with and learn from. And when I won't get into the whole search, but when I was first starting to search back in the day, back in the dial up day of AOL, there was an AOL adoption group where people were just online typing out their stories, asking each other's questions so we shared in that environment. So this is just bringing it into a different media, a uh, social media source, um, being able to share stories, I guess. Exactly. And um, to those of you that have been, um, you know, listening or writing letters to us, we've gotten a couple. Um, thank you. And we're definitely putting a plan together Um to help make your voices heard as well. So um, thanks again. Um, I think we're just going to get right into this week's and last week's topic. Last (laughs) week, um, I went ahead and answered the question why I decided to go about an adoption search in the first place. And um, so if you missed that, that's in episode three. So this week, it is Annie's turn to answer the question why she decided to conduct her adoption search. So go ahead, Annie, tell us what you have. Okay, why did I search? Well, why not? Um, There were more reasons to search than not. Um, My background, I grew up in a household that felt very chaotic. I felt pretty alone, isolated. Um, for many different reasons, which I I won't go into. Uh, But one of the reasons that I decided I wanted to search was to find some connection with someone who was genetically and hopefully kind of psychically, spiritually connected um, to me and I to them, uh, because I really didn't have anyone I felt connected to. You know, I just felt very isolated. Um, then the other reason would be health. I would definitely want, I wanted to know my health history uh, because I supposedly had a seizure when I was an infant. Um, so that was in my mind, but as it turns out, that was just like a febrile seizure um, really wasn't anything genetic, but it, it did put the seed in my mind that maybe I should know. Um, and then part of it is I wanted to replace the fantasies with reality. I think I told you about like this grandfather, this made up grandfather that I would tell people about that I remembered before I was adopted and, and we would hang out and he was just like a great farmer, dude. So (laughs) uh, I also fantasized, I, I was convinced that, uh, I was part Israeli. Um, so for one of my high school writing projects, I wrote about the history of Israel and I am not Israeli at all, but I learned a lot from my fantasy of thinking that I might be. Awesome. Um, I, I have no idea how I picked that out. I huh. really don't. It, that is just completely random. I think maybe it was going to church and being kind of fascinated with the old Testament. Um, 
seriously, just how much gravitas <laughs> there was in that. I'm like, oh, this is heavy. Wow. I think I, I think I want to be related <laughs> to these people. Wow. So, uh, so um, and then there were also my my adopted mother had her own fantasies about where I came from, all her own made up stories. And this is something I have not thought about in forever. Um, I was told my whole life, well, I think you're a change of life baby. And I had no idea what that meant when I was really little. And, you know, she didn't explain it to me. And then when I got older, she said, you know, menopause, uh, women who get pregnant at that time, maybe they're not, you know, they just can't handle a baby in their 40s and 50s. And so I'm just convinced you were a change of life baby. So I do think part of my motivation, and I know this is going to sound a little snippy, but you know, I'm going to say just like a pinch of spite. I wanted to prove her wrong that I wasn't a change of life baby. Because I'm like, how made up is that? You know, where did that come from? There was nothing in the um, information that we had on my adoption that would, you know, point to that. I was think, she, she told you this your whole life though? Yeah, my whole life. Got, okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was just sort of an odd thing to think. So, you know, she, she'd look at me and think, oh, you're a change of life baby. I didn't. I couldn't quite add that up. Uh, as it turns out, that's not true. Um, she did also. Uh, this one is. This one is both tragic, funny, and just I can't get my head around it. Still, she told me what she made up a name. She made up a name because I kept. I think I must have asked her a million times. What was my first name? What was my? And I probably said real name. Um, what was my first name? And this is like out of a weird Woolly, Woody Allen horror flick. <laughs> she told me my name was Lucy okay. and the last name was Bowles. Bowles. Lucy Bowles. Lucy Bowles? Bowles. Yes. So imagine a little five-year-old kid talking to her friends with their parents around saying, I found out my name. It's Lucy Bowles. And them laughing. (laughs) (laughs) Because it is a really sick pun. I mean, you know, like, who says, who tells their kid that was your name? So, so, okay. I need a a little picture painted here. Um, (laughs) Of course you do. Not of Lucy Bowles, please. No, 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 no. But I'm like, you know, just the chagrin, like, that I felt when I realized this okay. isn't, this isn't right. This so isn't right. in your adoptive family, um, can you tell us or the listeners what that comprised of mom? Oh yeah. Dad, uh, siblings, Adopted mom, uh, adopted dad, um, three other siblings, um, sisters that came not too much after they got me in the house. And then a brother. I think we did cover this before, but it's mm-hmm. worth going over. Yeah. So I was, and then there were foster kids that were older. So I was kind of in the middle there. Okay. So, um, yeah, I wanted to find out what my real name was for sure. And you were the only adopted child Correct. in your Correct. home. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then yep. I believe we said last week that your parents didn't, think that they could conceive children. Correct. Okay. Correct. And yes. then they started to have all kinds of kids. Right. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Yeah. So, so, um, you know, it was just, okay. I really just want to know the true story. I mm-hmm. also was honestly, I was interested in the idea of nature versus nurture. Mm-hmm. Um, I was becoming this person. I First of all, I was really lost. I didn't have a center. I always felt kind of like pinging around. Who am I? Who am I? And, you know, I know so many people struggle with that when they're growing up. So how much of that was like just adolescence versus how much of that was adoption? I just really struggled um, with 
the identity issue. I didn't know what I wanted. You know, I I couldn't tell you what I wanted to do with myself. Mm -hmm. Um, Was very unfocused. And do you think in part your adoption search was because you couldn't really make the connections within your adoptive family? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was, um, you know, there definitely there were moments where I felt like, oh, the, she gets me, you know, like, or they get me um, there. I remember one time being really sick, probably in third grade, laying on the couch and just not feeling well at all. And my adopted mom turned to me and said, do you want piano lessons? And I was like, what? Yes. You know, I was just beside myself. Like I felt at that moment, that wasn't just a question. That was just, she, she understands me like that. That's, that's really, I didn't know how important it was to me, but when she asked me that, I just blew my mind. Like, wow, that's so awesome. Because that's something that you were interested in doing. Very much so. Like I had been teaching myself keyboards since I could walk, uh, since I could reach a keyboard. So, um, that was really kind of cool to then be offered the lessons. So, and then, um, so that was a moment of connection, but those were like, I can pretty much point them out. You know, there are a handful of stories where it's like, Oh, okay. We're really connecting here. But a lot of it was just daily chaos. And, you know, I know people were doing their best. But I can, all I can say is I was lost. I was lost. Were your other siblings feeling the same way or do you think it was just you? I, I, I think that I really can't speak for them. I can say my impression is that we all had our issues um, in various ways. And I'm going to say that the, there was a certain isolation for all of us. You know, there was a certain amount of chaos that leaves people isolated if that that's hard to describe to understand unless you've lived through it but i'm going to say that if you're constantly rowing against the tide mm-hmm. <laughs> you just get tired and it's um it's just exhausting so the chance for connection isn't isn't quite there so you know it was a loud environment we were there was a lot of yelling all of the time. And by nature, I think I'm a, a bit quieter, mm-hmm. introspective. Uh, I like a good time, but um, as I've learned, I really like quiet time too. Right. In fact, when I think about it, when I was, uh, I'd always get up before everybody in the house for quiet time, even as a tiny little kid. I just to kind of, yeah, just to and have some I didn't, peace and quiet. I didn't know what my motivation back then was, but I just really did enjoy waking up and everything being quiet. So, and I still like that. So anyhow, so that's the sort of background of sort of chaos, lack of center, just really wanting to know where I came from and what my heritage was. Mm -hmm. So at the age of 18, um, it was never a secret where the files were on my adoption. I knew where, right where they were. So I plucked the uh, legal documents out of that file and went to the lawyer without thinking at all about my motivation. I just wanted to know. I, you know, I just wanted to know. There was, that was it. I just wanted to know where I came from, pure and simple. Um, I went to the lawyer. He came, like the secretary called into his office. He came out, told me to meet him in the hallway and he ripped me up up and down. He said, I had no right to find out that it was a closed adoption, that my parents who adopted me were my parents and just go back home and don't come, don't come here again. So I was like, wow. All right. But when things like that happen, I never, (laughs) it's kind of funny. It just gets me motivated. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm the same um, way. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you tell me no. <laughs> yeah. Screw you pissed you. me off. Yeah, I'm, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. But then it was time to go to college and I'm like, well, I'm going to just table all of this. It's going to take a lot of time and effort. And right then and there, it seemed absolutely impossible to mm-hmm. try to dig into it. 
um, it wasn't and 